Hello, hello again and welcome to another tutorial. And this time I will try to actually, I think, uh, remove old fungus in my Carl Zeiss planar 1.4 and it's a 50mm and T star and it's for the uh, contact Yasika mount and uh, I would like to clean it with some hydrogen peroxide and lighter fluid so let's see what what can be done with this nice old lens which is absolutely stunning um, better zoom out a little so things are in place now <clears throat> this uh, nice lens uh, normally it has, it has a um, Contax Yasika mount, but I put on a um, Litox uh, mount from so I can use it uh, to my Canon in this case. There are many other from Litox, but well, but uh, what is the, what is the problem in this lens? You probably can see there is something. But let's have a look with it at strong torch. There is old fungus in this lens, so let's see if I can show it. You can see there are some on the lens element. Maybe it's better if I turn it over and possibly you can see <coughs> there's a lot of dirt and dust in here so uh, it's not really good I mean if we took the torch away one can probably see it down there and there is also something over here but what can actually be done I mean the fungus has been there for I don't know how many years but uh, it would be fine to actually get it to a nice clean uh, I've taken a picture before I do this uh, uh, actually this is the case I took it before at a 2.8 40 millimeter <laughs> 40 140 second and with my Canon 500D and the same like setup camera on tripod and uh, I will show it in the beginning and I will show the other two after I clean the video I mean clean the lens <laughs> but I have to clean it anyway um, so let's jump into it we need some tools some uh, handy uh, this is old compasses I use as a uh, lens spanner you can also buy them on I mean different sites but uh, Amazon is a good place to search for them I will provide a list of what tools you can use or the tools I use so a pair of them and we also need some of this amazing tool from Japan Hobby Tool which is a set of six rubber cones with really sticky rubber and there are of course 12 different size one in each end and one can also use the the inside or the inside here uh, there are many many different uh, way you can use this one tool I will also use some of the other you can get on Amazon this is a part of a set of nine different um, so you actually have 18 <coughs> different size of uh, of those lens tool which is perfect for that thing uh, a good tweezer is also very handy and of course a lens blower <coughs> some cleaning um, wipes I use the peg pad but you c there are many different options you can use just only use them wet not dry 
So, and we will use two different solutions. I mean, actually, <clears throat> I will clean, I mean, try to clean the, the uh, fungus away with hydrogen peroxide and 3%. It's from the, uh, the, uh, yeah, <laughs> the apotheque or something. <clears throat> and I will clean after with lighter fluid. It could be simple, it could be extra, it doesn't really matter, uh, in my opinion. But uh, it should just be um, <clears throat> as uh, clean as solvent. This is, it works pretty good. <clears throat> And we also will need, when working with those Carl Zeiss lenses, we will need some nail polish remover with acetone. And of course, we will use some cotton buds together with this one. It's good stuff uh, because it's an anti-thread locker. I mean, it will loosen the, the thread lock somewhere in the lens. So, um, and this is actually what we are looking into. The front lens group which uh, have three lens elements and the back lens group which has also three lens elements in a different setup and the aperture plates in between. <coughs> Sorry. So let's, uh, let's go ahead and <coughs> see what can be done. Oh, sorry, I missed something. We will probably also use some of those extremely sticky uh, gloves, which you can get in the hardware store somewhere. And um, it's really good with working with lenses that sit so tight. I mean, lens retaining ring in front, name plates and so on. If it sticks too much, you can use those. <clears throat> so let's go ahead <clears throat> um, the only thing I need to do is to actually um, take off the nameplate set the aperture to something like 16 in this case here that's the beginning and then I will remove or try to remove the front name retaining plate name ring or so uh, and it can sit pretty tight so I first try with this one the gray set but um, sometimes it's simply not as sticky enough as you can see even if I press a lot it will not come off so what to do about that well, I will try to use the other one, <clears throat> which is the extremely sticky rubber. And uh, one can actually fit in here and try to, yeah, it comes off. I mean, of course, uh, this is easier because I already have been into the lens, but you're, it could be that you're retaining ring sits maybe much tighter than this one so therefore <clears throat> you probably need those uh, flexible basic uh, working gloves with sticky I mean try it in the uh, hardware store and look for those they're really good and I probably maybe later will try to to use them <clears throat> later in the video I don't know it will you will see so just unscrew it counterclockwise all the way but take care because you have to have the lens like this and then <clears throat> um, nothing will really happen because there is a retaining ring here the outer retaining ring here. There is a notch here and a notch there. Well, you see, there's also a not, notch there and there, but it's for the actual 
um, lens group that will be taken off the the inner tube, <coughs> the inner assembly. But uh, I need to unscrew the, um, the front retaining ring here, and I already have adjusted this lens spanner for this, and it should come off pretty easy. If not, this sits tight. Well, I've screwed it on really tight to get the the same uh, <coughs> the same uh, what do you say <laughs> the same way of if it was just like uh, I've never taken it off. But sometimes they are really sticky, so I will use some nail polish remover and add on the edge of the retaining ring and let it suck in and you can also always, always use on the other side so and let it suck in and let it sit for well just a little so um, we can see if it will help a little sometimes it, it goes pretty fast to soften the dreadlock so we we'll try it again. Wow. So it's it works pretty good. I've tried with the um, isopropyl alcohol, but it doesn't work the way that way. Now <clears throat> take off the retaining ring and. Um, that's it. But now we have to, to be careful because when I f turn it over the full lens assembly inside will come out. So just have it safely so and it will pop into your hand. <clears throat> when reassemble it it's good to set the lens to to actually uh, near end it's no problem with taking it out when it sets to infinity but when you put this assembly back into the lens into the focusing assembly uh, you need to set it to to near end it will say 0 0.45 because then it will be much easier when this pin come in and catch the this uh, fork here over whatever it calls <laughs> so <clears throat> now here this is the actual lens assembly with the back lens group here and the front lens group <clears throat> there is a screw with a plate on the side here and it's not necessary to take out if you do I mean, before you probably think, okay, I have to unscrew this to get the front um, lens group out. Do yourself a, a favor. It will say scratch here on the side where this plate sit. So you know if you unscrew it, you can come back to the correct because this one is also used to adjust the um, actually the way the the lens assembly here sits. Um, I mean, it has something to do with the aperture. So if you move it a little, it will in, uh, it will have something to do with the aperture. So be careful with that. It's not necessary to unscrew it. So let's uh, get into it and take out the, the front lens group here. Uh, as you might see, there are some signs of, of they have used some thread lock. It will say something like here. Um, so then again, we will use 
more of this stuff. Uh, you have to sit in a good ventilated area. See, just let it suck in. It will find the way to the thread so uh, and soften it pretty quickly. You might use less or more to soften those uh, thread locks because they are actually very strong. So, and it will find the way all the way around. So, let it sit a little and then uh, we could actually also do the same with the back lens group here just to so it's done and ready to unscrew so it's the same what happened here the uh, <coughs> nail polish remover will suck into the thread and since it's all metal there is no plastic in this one except for the aperture plates so it will be safe enough so that must be fine for now and let's see if we can actually get the off by unscrew the the back lens group and have a good grip on oh. careful <laughs> it's a silicon mat so there is no problem with that but you can use the number six of the of the cones here rubber cones to hold here and take care of the aperture pin don't bend it so we use this one um, and we will see if we can <coughs> sits pretty tight even if I have been into the lens so here you can see <coughs> all this stuff here on the thread on and on here it's old uh, really hard thread lock and here we can see a lot of fungus probably can <coughs> here are those don't know if we can show it and all the dirt and dust <laughs> that is in here it's just amazing And I am very sure it will be better when they're done <coughs> when it's done now to get into the uh, back lens group here I need to take off the retaining ring here which sits with two notches in there and there so by using a um, lens spinner here not this one I can just adjust it <coughs> for that if it sits too tight but of course you can always try to unscrew it with a rubber tool before you use the um, the lens tool so this one always take it as a first step it can sit pretty tight so if we do so there <clears throat> and there is also signs of um, of thread locks so uh, I will try to make it easier to unscrew by using some nail polish remover and let it suck in here so it comes all the way around And if it isn't enough, we could just use a little more. So, 
So, and let it, okay, <laughs> it's a dirty lens, <clears throat> you can see. Now, <clears throat> uh, we can try to, actually, let's see if it, this one will work. No, it's a little too small. <clears throat> But I can use one of the other ends of the uh, cones here. And let's see if it. Okay, it comes loose. It works. So. And uh, now I can just continue unscrew it with a rubber cone and simply doing so that's it and then we are exposed to a lens um, the first of the back lens group so I can just pop it in with my hand flip it over and then get the next lens element out by shaking it so it will come out so this is how it looks as I um, show on the map here <laughs> the drawing here it will look like this so as you can see here the uh, the very back is a is a plant concave and the other one is a I mean convex in here and it's concave on the other side which is the next lens so and it looks a bit dirty it's not that much on this one on this uh, lens element but uh, let's see what we can do about it. And where is my... I need a stand for this lens. Mm -hmm. And I will take the outside first. So. And use some... Some nail polish. No. <laughs> Not nail polish. Hydrogen peroxide uh, combined with with the uh, with the lighter fluid. Maybe it's not necessary for this lens because it looks pretty okay. But uh, okay, I will just try the lighter fluid first. See how it will go. So there and move it around and hopefully there was there will be anything left and when you use the um, lighter fluid there is not anything left I mean it's totally clean but you can see here on the edge probably there are some signs of of uh, fungus so I will use the hydrogen peroxide and hopefully it will work I think it's always interesting to see how much it can be done with a lens that somebody says no you can't do anything hmm. you probably can do more than you expect in this case with this hydrogen peroxide so I will just use a little it's not the amount of uh, hydrogen peroxide that is important but uh, it's more the, the effect it has on a lens with fungus and yeah there's still something over here that could be 
<coughs> doing better. And move it slowly because then the way the the hydrogen peroxide will work better. And it will not damage the uh, coating. The coating is much stronger than you think. Well, it's, it's actually going much better. But we can try to clean after uh, with some lighter fluid and see how good it will be. And I always try to clean twice after a... Oh! <laughs> It's difficult to see anything through the lens. I mean, it looks amazing clear. There's still something over here, but it's very, very small amount. I can just add a little more. Of the uh, hydrogen peroxide. Because, uh, I mean, doing it twice, uh, you will not uh, damage anything. And to put a light pressure on the, uh, uh, on the wipes, it's the fluidium, and I mean the hydrogen peroxide, that will do the work. There's no need for have high pressure on. Well, it looks like it's uh, much, much better. So, <laughs> it's just clean after that with lighter fluid. Wow. <laughs> it's just amazing. It's just amazing. I mean, it's just clean. But there's still something on the back here that, which I haven't cleaned yet uh, proper. So, what do I have? Okay, I will just use this. Maybe I will clean it in again, but well, let's see how good it will be. Yeah, and here we are. It's so much better than it was. So That's just amazing. Put it somewhere where you <coughs> where it will sit safe. And then we can do the other lenses. I mean the next lens element here. And it's not easy to take out, so uh, it just sit in this uh, ring. It's mounted in, and it's not. You can just uh, take it out, so it just sit there. So um, I think I will use this stand. It's better. So there it is, and I will just clean the in here first. And then I will use a uh, cotton gut. Or better enough, I will use some of those tiny cotton bud. They are much smaller, and it's uh, easier to get into into the edge 
is better than the uh, than the normal bigger one and I have simply buy those on a shop in London called yeah what's the name of it well it says something on the yeah okay it's www.mujai.net probably you can see here there and it's a good thing with those small one I will put it the <clears throat> the, the thing where you find it in the description so and I think that this one this lens uh, is well it's okay but I will clean it anyway so and then have a wipe and then clean it it can be a little different in the edge so take take good care of that because it's difficult to get into the edge here but it's actually fine in my opinion and then I can just take the other side <clears throat> and see how good it will be. There could be fungus on some of the lenses here. Even if you cannot see it, there could be some signs of light, of light fungus. But wow, it looks so much better. <laughs> There's still something on here, you can see. Maybe I wasn't um, maybe I didn't clean it good enough, but I will try again. Wow, what a difference. That is, that is just amazing. So, <clears throat> put this aside. And then we can do the, the <clears throat> back lens group inner. Inside here. I mean, here it looks fine. But... Uh, isn't is it good well let's see take away this uh, if there are better stand here maybe this one or maybe this one here nah <clears throat> okay I will just use this as, as it is Oh, I could do it in a different way. So, and put it on the biggest one of those and put it in here, as you can see here. So it could be, it could act as a good stand for this. And now I will just uh, clean it first with the lighter fluid and use a curtain, but as a support in the middle I mean in the edge <laughs> of course uh, to see if it will take away the rest of the thing in the edge so Mm -hmm. yeah it helps 
it helps a lot. Wow, amazing. Now, <clears throat> to the more delicate side, as I see it, but there is, it looks like there is some, uh, there is something between this lens ornament here and the back side here. But isn't there any? Yeah, there's also fungus on here. As uh, we see, if we take a torch, it looks pretty okay on here, but uh, there is something on over here. As you might see, it's better to see on the other side there. There's really a lot. <clears throat> so I will give it another go with uh, with the hydrogen peroxide on here to see if I probably can remove it. Interesting. So we need some more of this stuff. So. So, and then it's ready to use. And move slowly around to let it suck in on the uh, on the edge. I mean, in this case, it could be different in your lens, but. Um, <coughs> Let the hydrogen peroxide do the work. So let's see how good it will be. Hmm. Well, <clears throat> it seems that uh, something happened. I mean, <laughs> really happened. That's just amazing. It seems the, the fungus is gone here in this lens on this side. So I can just clean it. Uh, this lens is not uh, meant to be taken out. It's just put in. So it sits only in the uh, in the mount here. <clears throat> so I need to do the final cleaning. Um, with lighter fluid and then it should be okay maybe I could have put the, the lens um, this lens into to uh, just in a small container with the hydrogen peroxide and let it stay there but um, wow <laughs> that's just amazing there is no fungus left and there was before so let's see how much is left on this side there is something on the on the side here so I could probably just clean this, uh, the most inside of the back lens group with the hydrogen peroxide and let's say that's fine. So let's do it here. So this fine lens can be, be used for taking good photos There's still something on the edge <clears throat> I know it can be different difficult to see uh, 
because of the um, oh but I will show it anyway so what So on the edge here, so and I think it will be fine for now. That's just a little left. I think the most of the fungus in this lens lens was uh, on the um, in the back lens group. But I will just uh, try to clean <clears throat> with the lighter fluid and see how much is left. And it's good sometimes to just do a cleaning with the lighter fluid after the uh, after the hydrogen peroxide and take a look how good or bad is it. There's still something on the edge of. Um, on the inside here but it's not really something that uh, matter but um, just because I cannot take the lens element out of this but to me <clears throat> it looks so much better so I just uh, I'll just you do a, a one more time for the hydrogen peroxide and I think it's absolutely the best it could be and we could probably also take the edge here uh, of the lens so don't put too much pressure on when using your hydrogen peroxide on the side where the ink is it could it could probably take some of the ink away and then you have to re-ink it uh, which could be <coughs> a problem but isn't a problem here so and I do a cleaning again with lighter fluid and hopefully it's Done. And I will just do another go. Yeah. I'll just use another one. <clears throat> so you probably need to use maybe two or three or four uh, lens tissue depending on how bad the lens is. I mean, until you are satisfied with the with the work. So this one just need. I think it will be the last go for this lens. And here we are. There's probably something in here that could be taken away. So I will just uh, do a like cleaning there are some specks in here yeah I think it's fine for now I mean 
<coughs> there is really not anything I mean how look how much cleaner it is it's just amazing so I mean you probably remember before there was a lot of fungus but there, there's not really anything left here so hmm that's good so I, I will just put the, the lens element into the back lens assembly group and say that's fine for now And be careful and use the blower a lot because it will um, prevent the dust from coming in. So, then put it on. It has a pretty tight fit. I mean, you can always disassemble the, the lens again if you are not satisfied. See, here there are some signs of thread lock, which I mentioned in the beginning. <clears throat> says it will be interesting to see how good this lens is after this treatment and if you want you can just use a lens burner to tighten the lens I mean the retaining ring so it sits proper no need for over tighten it you maybe have to go into it sooner but the, the lens looks much cleaner and better. So that was it. Now the front lens group. And uh, you probably remember I used some nail polish remover to actually do the uh, soften the thread lock here. But I will just do it again. So it will probably be easier to unscrew. So there, that's it. <clears throat> and um, the aperture here. Now the, um, I need a rubber tool, probably this one. No, maybe the big one here. Take care of the pin. Do not bend it. So it's probably better to have it here. So it's something between here. And you have a good grip around here. Like this. And then you could try to use a rubber tool. And probably unscrew it <clears throat> and looks like it's, it's coming off yeah it's free but still very tight e yeah <laughs> really But many Carl Zeiss lenses of this uh, age, they have used so much thread lock on those. <clears throat> now, this is the aperture assembly, which looks like this. And actually the lens, front lens group, which I will go into. <clears throat> and... Uh, I will simply begin with the uh, the inner lens element. 
it will say this lens element here it looks like it's when seeing it it is something like that there's a lens here that can be taken out the next lens is also to be taken out out and of course the front lens can be taken out so it will be pretty easy uh, a kind of <laughs> so you see there is also a retaining ring here that can sit pretty tight so I'll try to soften it with uh, some nail polish remover some magical stuff and let it suck in to the thread it will evaporate pretty quickly I mean <clears throat> so even if I have been into it uh, before and just take a look it can still be very tight so uh, I can use the uh, number four I would guess yes the rubber cone number four and then I will just use the inside and so put it over <clears throat> And use number six, maybe number five will fit. No, I think I will just use the number six, put it on, and then have a good grip. And it's free. So, <clears throat> and just let the lens come off like here <clears throat> um, so it is maybe it's it's tight it can just be popped out of the of the frame here now there is probably also some fungus on the edge I mean it could be Well, there is just a small sign of something, but um, I'll just use a light um, hydrogen peroxide on this lens. <coughs> put in a <coughs> sorry, put it on a good stand, and I'm ready to go here. So. And then <coughs> use some, let's see where it is, here, oh, I need another napkin here, <laughs> not napkin, <laughs> it'll be a wipe, but how to drink peroxide, just make the tissue wet. So there, there's a funny thing, this hydrogen peroxide. It's not water and... So, let's give it a go. Yeah, it looks better. And then we do a final cleaning with the um, lighter fluid. The front lens group is actually much cleaner than the back lens group. So it, there, I don't think there should be any problem here. But I uh, have to clean it anyway. Wow. Yeah, I'll just do another go. <clears throat> and here we are. So I can just take the other side. And 
do that. And again, I will just use the, the hydrogen peroxide <laughs> to, if there was any, and there probably are some uh, fungus spores or so in the lens assembly house. I don't know. There could be some. Um, but of course, then I have to clean the whole <laughs> the whole thing, which I think ah okay. And sometimes it's st simply stop uh, growing, and sometimes they continue. It depends on how you store your lens. If this lens has been in a basement coal, I mean, basement, uh, I would think the fungus have a good thing to grow. But look, look how good it is right now. It's so much better. There's some dust here. <clears throat> And I think I put it back into the lens. <clears throat> and say that's fine for now. And then uh, I will do the, uh, the front lenses. Then put this on. and tighten it. Wow, big difference. <laughs> so, there is no need for over tighten it, but because if you have to go into it again, you have to <laughs> the, do the hard work again. But now I will uh, simply try to unscrew the uh, the front lenses in the two lenses here, and there's also again <laughs> uh, there have used some thread lock here, so uh, I need to do this stuff again and. See if it's uh, possible to soften the the thread lock. Just let it suck in, come around, and it will do the job. So, and where do I have a? Probably this one. Because there are no notches to open this, uh, oh, there's no notches to open this retaining ring, I mean front plate here. So I need to use a rubber tool to put it on, I mean to unscrew it. And off it comes. It can sit tight. So. And all for this retaining ring, and that the lens pop out. I also need a um, where did it go? Where did it go? I need a lens sucker. This is just a tiny one, but it will probably be very helpful to take the the next lens element out and probably also this lens but try to put it on here so and here it is that's the front lens 
And it looks a bit, just a bit damaged. I mean, I don't know what people have used to clean with, but um, let's see how it will go. So again, find a good stand to put it on. And I think I'll do the outside first. It's also, also it's always good because then um, there is no, uh, I mean, if I clean the inside first and put it on here, there could be, probably could be something on this uh, stand. So therefore I do the, the, the outside first. So let's see how it will go. I think it's only necessary to clean with the with the lighter fluid on the front. So there. And it's it looks much better. <laughs> then the inside here. And I think I also just will try to use the <coughs> the lighter fluid for this. <coughs> so there. Wow. Big difference. It's a really huge difference. I mean, it's not a new lens, but uh, Still, it uh, is a good lens. So the next lens element, which will be the the middle lens element here, of that I will use my uh, <coughs> lens sucker. Well, I could just let it pop into my hand, which I will just try to do. But no, oh, I remember. If you do so, nothing will happen. Haha. <laughs> Um, I forgot. <laughs> it sits with a retaining ring, but a smaller one, thinner one. There's a notch here and a notch there. So let's unscrew it with a, a fine pointed uh, lens tool and have a good grip and then and loosen it. Then unscrew it. You cannot do this with a, a rubber tool, um, in my opinion. I mean, maybe you can, maybe this one will fit. No, it will not. Hmm. Well, so we'll just use the the lens tool here and try to unscrew it. So it's loose at the moment. Maybe it's not easy to get out, but I can just let it pop into my uh, my stand here, rubber stand. So. It has a tight fit here. So it is. And then we have this lens. It's a pretty deep lens on one side. It's really convex in here and it's really concave here. So let's see what we can do about it. And again here I will clean the inside first uh, just to make it easier put it on some stand so and try to just clean it with a lighter fluid so 
over there. So. And how does it look? Well, it looks actually clean. It's better. <clears throat> it will be interesting when the lens is actually assembled how good the treatment was. But uh, in my opinion, it will it will be good. I mean, to get rid of the the hydrogen peroxide. Uh, I mean, <laughs> the fungus. Sorry. <laughs> So and there it is. There's something here on the side. Yeah. And there was something in here. which I didn't see first. So, so now I think it's, uh, <clears throat> oh, is it actually focus here? There's, there's still something. So I will just clean it with the hydrogen peroxide again. Interesting. So, and here's this stuff. Yeah, I think it works better. Seems like that uh, fragment that was on is disappear. So <clears throat> again, clean with the with the lighter fluid, and then it's time to put the lens back into normal order. So. Do some lighter fluid cleaning. <clears throat> and do it twice. So just do it again. <clears throat> Let's see how it turned out to be. Yeah, I think it's much better. Then do the outside. And I think I will just do the do the hydrogen peroxide on this lens too. I mean this lens surface. And say that's fine. So there, <clears throat> and do the final cleaning with lighter fluid. But it's also to wipe away the uh, the rest of the hydrogen peroxide. But don't do it with a dry. Um, 
lunch tissue. The lunch tissue is simply not good when it's only dry. It works best with some kind of fluidium. Yeah, I think it's it's pretty good now. Just do it once again, and that's it. Hopefully, the result with will be better than <laughs> the beginning. So that's fine for now. <clears throat> Just blow away some small hairs. And then put the lens into the front lens assembly. And I will just put it on the, the uh, retaining ring here. So there, put it on a stand like this, and use a lot of hair, flip it over. So there and it sits where it should can be a little tricky to put this retaining in in but I think it will be fine Find the thread, and here we are, right on track. And gently tighten this retaining ring. So, and here we are. <coughs> and then put in the uh, front lens. It looks almost perfect. And then use a lens sucker to simply put it on here. So, and then the front retaining ring here for the lens group will go in. Where do I have a rubber stand? <coughs> so, catch the thread and use a bigger one to actually put the I mean, tighten the the front ring here. Uh, it's not good. Maybe this one will work better on this side. Sometimes it's, uh, it can be a problem when you try to screw those in. There was some small marks here. Not good. <laughs> But I can just clean them away in an easy way. Oh, there was something on here. Yeah, it 
looks fine. <coughs> and then add this into the to the um, aperture assembly. Put it in here. Click. And it has a pretty tight fit because of the old thread lock. But it has to be fully screwed in. So, and there it is. Uh, where do we have it? This one. This one is better to just tighten it gently. So, and of course, take care of the pin for the aperture. Then I can just finally put in the um, the back lens group and uh, hopefully things have improved. There's still something here, but there's nothing really I can do about. Uh, maybe it needs a longer treatment with uh, hydrogen peroxide. Could be, but. Sometimes it's uh, you can do it as best as you can, but uh, so. But how good was it actually? Well, there's still a fragment of something, but. Uh, as you can see, it's much better, and the fungus has gone away. I can just clean this so... <clears throat> and I maybe need to go in again, just take some fragments away. Well, it depends on how bad it is. But... Uh, the only thing I miss is actually to put the this uh, lens assembly into the focus assembly. Okay, that's fine. So close the aperture and set the the aperture ring to sixteen. Then line up the uh, the pin in here with the fork. And try to catch it and it is easier when the the um, the focus ring is set to something uh, near end so we're just of course see there this little piece here will go into this notch So it's just like there, and hopefully it will be fine. So try to catch the the pin, the aperture pin to the fork here, and I think the rest of it will line up. So. Okay, where did it go? So, it's difficult to to actually see it, and at the same time, <laughs> um, show it for the camera. But it looks like something. Probably can see it there. Yeah, down here. So. And now the uh, front retaining ring that actually holds the whole lens assembly in place goes on. And then we will use a um, lens spinner here. Oh. So there, and 
gently tighten it and we just miss the the uh, nameplate here that goes on click there should be a thread click and finally screw it in and then we are done and to me I mean the lens is much better than it was it could probably be be, be better <coughs> if I spend a little more time on it especially on the the inner uh, back lens element but still it will uh, the fungus is gone as you could see so uh, and there will also be an after photo picture taken with this lens so um, well hope you like the content and uh, can use the info so uh, thanks for watching and uh, have a good time bye bye